This episode of Corner Duty Tend to Beer is sponsored by Maui Blink, the faster, simpler, and more rewarding car insurance. Get a quote in minutes. Get car cover sorted in a blink. Perfect the product, everything else will take care of yourself. For AKA to hit us up and put us on a record. A hit. A hit record that's gonna be playing for the rest of our lives. It was the product, it was the impact we had on the on the, on the, on the culture based on the product. From Corner Jude and the Beer, I'm going to see this with you. I'm going to see this with CJ, formerly known as Razi Matonzel, bringing you a show about creative entrepreneurs live from the landmark that not only birth as a street culture, but also formalize a street hustle. On today's episode, we have... Chat. Corner Jude and the Beer, special edition, my personal, most requested. I wanted this one, it's finally here. Might drop it as soon as we can, but we have Chat. The man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Galax boy himself, sure. aka Cheese boy. You know how you doing? I'm easy, bro. How are you? Oh, man, I'm, I'm great. Like I was looking for this episode, right? Because I've been a fan. I was all the way in the Eastern Cape. Yeah. So I'm watching Galax boy like fuck the parties. I'm looking at the drinks, the branding, the beanies, the condoms, the whole nine yards. I'm like, damn, this is what South African street culture is. Sure. Right? Because you built a community. How did you get to a point where you're like, yo, I'm doing this for real and I keep scaling? I mean, I didn't even, I didn't have a plan, to be honest with you. I was just doing what I wanted to do and um, basically, in my hood, they, they basically say, you know, sure. you just do whatever you have to do, then you know, whatever happens, happens. So, it wasn't really planned. All the ideas just came. An idea comes, we do it. Yeah. You know, it works. It doesn't work out. Then we move on. You know what I mean? So, yeah. You're one of the biggest brands right now in South Africa, independently. Yeah, I believe so. How important is research in the whole process of creating items? Man, research is basically the backbone of my brand, to be honest with you. Uh, from your... I, I took inspiration from your babes, from your Louis Vuitton, from your Nikes, from your... So everything I, I do, I look at something else first. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I mean, if... Just like if uh, something like uh, making a t-shirt, mm -hmm. it looks simple, but you know, you have to check where the big companies make their stuff. You know, so you just walk into a store, maybe a Nike store, you open the t-shirt, there's a tag inside of the t-shirt, it tells you, made in Vietnam, made in China, made in whatever. And from there, you go on, on Google, yeah. say t-shirt manufacturers in Vietnam or China, it pulls out uh, links, you know, Alibaba, whatever. You go in there, then from there, you take it from there, you know what I mean? So, research is literally the backbone of my business you know you have to research everything though. Yeah. otherwise you never get it right and now you do your research you find the website you find the manufacturer of Alibaba how do we then quality control how are you sure because I think the biggest thing that's stopping most of us is mm. like you see it's possible but you're like hey they want 10,000 yeah. <laughs> for the sample Yeah. how are you sure how often the calculations and the risk I mean um, usually like manufacturers they don't really want much for samples. Maybe around 1,000 to 500 rand, you know what I mean? So, but you have to do the samples. You cannot make a product and not have a sample. You know, you have to test it, you know, you have to wear it, wash it and see if the shirt lasts, if the print lasts, you know what I mean? So obviously you have to go through a few manufacturers. I went I went through, I don't know how many, but I went, I. I go through manufacturers like nobody's business. You know, we have to make sure that this is this is the one. You know what I mean? So it's part of the process of researching and everything like that. So you have to do it. There's no other way. Mm. You can't trust someone. You can't ask someone. Mm. You have to do it yourself. Because a lot of brands come to me. It's like, yo, can you teach me the ropes? I'm, the first thing I tell them, yo, just do your research. What do you want to do? I want to do this. Okay, go on Google and say you want to do this. And take it from there. Yeah. I can't tell you anything. You know, because I did it my way, you might do it your way because 
I don't you don't see things how I see it. You know, I don't see things how you see it. Yeah. So you have to do it your own way. If you have questions, yes, I'll answer the questions. But I can't tell you how to do what you want to do. What are the formalities in running a clothing brand? You could just can't skip that because you, you're still working off instinct yeah. and you know something is fire. But what are those formalities that you found? I can't skip these. Uh, formalities... Well, pretty much my business is still... The formalities are on the other side. But in terms of making the clothes, it's basically about what you feel, what instinct, if you think, no, this color is going to work, or this design is going to work, you know what I mean? Obviously, you have to you have to look what's happening around the world, obviously. Yeah. But, like, at the end of the day, they, at the end of the day, it's about, I think this one is going to, you know, uh, work. It's all about instinct at the end of the day, in terms of making clothes. And once the clothes are done and they are here, the stock is here, I hand everything else to the team. Mm. They figure out how they want to do it, how they're going to whatever. But me, basically, my job currently is just to make the clothes and have them uh, in stock. Mm. And then how did you find the structure? That, you know, there's these people in China who produce for us. Do yeah. you physically go to China at some stage? What's the logistics of you finally having the structure to say, Okay, let's say Oba King handles this, this yeah. person handles this. How did you find the business structure? So basically in the beginning, uh, I used to I used to work for Oba Keep Keep. Yeah. I used to design for them, etc. So instead of asking for for like a salary or payment like that, I told the guy to to show me the ropes, you know. So one day he was like, We just finished designing the winter stock. So he was like, you know what, let's fly to China. Uh, organize a ticket, then I'll handle everything else. So I'm asking, so there I'm asking my girl, I'm like, yo, I need to go to China, see what's going on in the game, you know? So we, I got a flight, we flew to China. So I got there with Kosana, and I think I was with the Lens also. We got the, we saw the factories, how they print, how they whatever. And when we got there, I already had my designs like ready in yeah. case. He was like, no, just give them, you know what I mean? So we got there, he was like, he was doing his things. So before we left, he was like, no, uh, give them your samples, maybe give them your design, maybe they'll make a few uh, samples for you. So I was like, hey, great shot. Gave them the, the designs, they made the samples. Maybe uh, two, three weeks later, they shipped them. Got the samples. Uh, I think towards the end of the year, that's when my contract was finishing with Amma Keep Keep. And I flew back again alone to China. Yeah. That's when I like uh, started going into deep with the manufacturers, you know, checking out the shops. Because China is huge, like it's extremely huge. There's everything there, you know, whatever you want to make, from TVs to clothes to whatever plates. You can, you can. It's like a dream place. You know what I mean? They manufacture anything. So from there, yeah, I started going to China alone, though, like maybe every two, three months. My parents were like, you're going alone, blah, 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 what if, what if? I'm you like, don't know what in China, you know what I mean? except the manufacturer. Yeah. So the thing is, I started very young, so I, I literally had nothing to lose, like to be honest. That's why I tell uh, like young niggas when they, when they, when they contemplating or starting something, I'm like, dog, you have nothing to lose. You live in your parents' house, you pay no rent, you have no babies. Whatever you want to start, just start it. If it falls, you can get it back up because yeah. you're losing nothing. You're only losing a bit of time, you know? I mean, and when you're young, you got a bit of time. Although, like, niggas are dying young these days, but, like, you got a bit of time when you're young. So you have to do it as soon as you can. As soon as I can, man. Yeah. I'm thinking of it, this great idea, I have it. You're yeah. How did you grow the Galax Boy community? Uh, I think the first thing we did, I think it was back in 20, 2012, 2014, somewhere there. I had made like a thousand caps. I found like cheap caps in, in China mm. for like maybe 15 grand each. They were poor quality though. So we did those caps, they were like red and red and blue with the with the white uh, logo. 
we did those cards like a thousand of them so uh, homecoming had events like huge events came out like you come to the show <laughs> <laughs> yeah you must come homecoming had like huge events like 10,000 15,000 people so we should just go there give out caps so we give you a, give you a cap we take a picture of you post you on Facebook we tag you you know what I mean that's how we started building that's what that was my plan to just get out get the logo out there you know the name yeah. so we bump into you at the, at the at the event give you a cap take a picture we post it on our Facebook or whatever so from there we started growing we basically uh, started making t-shirts then we figured no let's make events now so we started events called them fact VIP yep so the event started with with a t-shirt actually so I had a t-shirt um, it was like fuck VIP it was basically saying fuck VIP you know you don't want VIP with the normal guys we you know what I mean so we started with t-shirts then eventually we started an event was the first one was what was at uh, my boy's house uh, Ipuseng um, so I'm not sure how many people came maybe 200 300 they stole his TV <laughs> <laughs> so he had it was, it was a house then they had like a pool house outside yeah. in the pool house there was a TV you locked the house you didn't lock the pool house yeah you know what I mean so we had some everybody came from everywhere you know Atrisville Sosha Pitori Mamelodi so some nigga stole the TV I knew the nigga you know what I mean <laughs> he stole the TV whatever you know but obviously in the morning we had to like replace the TV we found the TV and we mounted it and whatever yeah. Yeah, but the party was a success we did the second one we did the third one I think the f- fifth or sixth one was the biggest that's the one that makes it to Vuzu yeah we had it on the rooftop yeah I think like 6,000 people but the thing is with these parties they, they started becoming too rowdy I mean you said VIP yeah <laughs> No, that's the gift and the curse, you know what I mean? So they coming they started becoming too rowdy, you know, cars getting broken into, you know, people fighting, blah blah blah, phones getting stolen. So I was like, Ish, I, this is the last one. So we had a big one, six thousand people, then I think that was a uh, yeah, that was the last one we did. Yeah. And from there Yeah, we had opened the store also two thousand and fourteen with my previous partners. Uh, the store was moving you know what I mean it's just that at that point I don't think if I'm being honest I don't think I was mature enough to actually run a business mm. you know? I could make the clothes I could sell the clothes that was the easy part but like sustaining the business and making sure everything runs well was was something I didn't know and obviously with my partners um they also never had like retail experience they were just like businessmen with money running a business how they run a business you know so i think retail is a bit different from normal businesses you know what i mean so yeah it didn't it it ended up being like a sour um relationship relationship you know what i mean so but we gotta highlight that you made your first million yeah (laughs) yeah i made my first million yeah Um, I think I was 24, 26, somewhere there. Yeah, we made our first melee. Well, I, actually, I didn't know. I found out at the end of the year. I was like, damn, we made this much? You know what I mean? So I wasn't really focused on the business side of things. I wasn't really aware of what's going on. I was sure. just making the clothes, selling the clothes, pushing the events, building the brand. You know what I mean? Uh, trying to get on the clothes to uh, any artist I could get on on them to you know what I mean music videos speaking of artists yeah what, what's that cosign like Galax boy that's culture <laughs> I mean you know first time I heard that I couldn't believe it yeah you know what I mean because AK is like AK is like a monster I, I wouldn't expect something from that for me you know what I mean he's like a he's like a really big deal so yeah. when I heard that I was like what what do you, what do you mean I'm like, rewind that shit. Play back, too. <laughs> hey, yo, Apple Music. <laughs> Let's see the you know lyrics. I, mean? I was like, damn, that's crazy. Yeah. So as soon as that happened, I had to show love. You know, I had to like, yo, told everybody, yo, uh, please put a package for Keenan. 
I want him to have everything in the in the in the in the, in the, in the factory. You know what I mean? Everything in the collection. So you put up a box, send it to him directly. You know what I mean? Um, cause I wasn't sure. You know, thing is, I knew Keenan back then. You know, like the old version of him. Yeah. So he was very arrogant and like, so even when you meet him in public, you're like, hey, is he gonna greet me or not? You know what I mean? So I knew that version of him. So I wasn't sure, like, if even he's gonna wear the clothes or not. Yeah. So my man, I send them the clothes. Hey, next thing I see, dog, he's posting pictures and whatever. So, I think for me that was the biggest cosign ever. Cause we started talking about. I called him like, yo, dog. I, Cause this was last year. I was like, yo, dog. I think maybe we must put out something next year. Since you're dropping the album and yeah, whatever, we can do. The yeah, we can do a whole range. I don't even care what we do. We can do the whole range. Summer, winter, I'm all in. You know sure. what I mean? He's like, yeah, no doubt. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk soon. So that it shouldn't be an issue. Oh, well. Yeah. So I was looking forward to that, but it's God's plans, man. You hey, know what I mean? Man. But speaking of your partnerships and brands, yeah, a stepping stone, man. You get the call from NetBank, yo. Yeah. The niche. Yeah, NetBank. Um, was a very I was very surprised like you know a bank a whole bank a whole bank you know something so formal you know one of the mean? biggest yeah so you take net bank uh, I mean for me sometimes it's a challenge but it ends up being very simple well because I'm I'm like I have a formula of doing things so they send in the logos they send in the brief I was like ah okay next up um Usually I, I I take I don't take long to to put push out the designs. It's just that if maybe you give me a month, I'm gonna do it uh, last week. Last the last two days I'll put it together. You know what I mean? So I put it together, maybe in like two, three days I put it together, I send it to them. They didn't even change anything. But it's proven. Yeah. You've been selling it. Yeah, yeah. So we press play we manufacture everything was beautiful you know what I mean so yeah I appreciate those kind of uh, partnerships where they don't they don't really fiddle with the with the designs that much because if someone calls you to do something they mustn't tell you how to do it sure they you have an mean? expert yeah yeah man like your business like I think the biggest one for me is when you get called by the biggest retail giant in yeah. Africa and yeah. Australia, they're hitting you up for a job. What's that thing that told you, yo, man, actually let me bet on myself. There's more for me with Galax Boy than it is to just work corporate and push numbers and see how the structures are. I mean, when they called me, I was pretty young. So I was like, okay, no, let me hear these people out. You know, I fly, I fly, I fly down to Cape Town, um, go into the meeting. So first question I ask, what would it take for you to leave Galax Boy? I'm like, okay, uh, maybe a, a billion rands. I don't know. Yeah. They're like, yo, that's too much. I'm like, why? What's up? They're like, no, we want you to take over this brand, uh, but you can't. You have to leave everything Galax Boy. You can't even speak to people that work there. You can't even like nothing you can't even text your partners or anything you have to be locked in into this our brand we'll give you a salary we'll give you a house everything whatever you need a car I was like ah, there's no way I can leave my brand it's it's impossible you know I, I've come too far from it with it you know as I started when I started the brand I, used, I was using paint that's how I was basically using what I have, you know, those, you know, uh, Microsoft Paint, trying to do designs. Those cheese boys designs that did on Microsoft Paint. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, I learned a lot from starting this brand, so I can't just like... Abandon it now. For leave it check. for a salary and a house in Cape Town where I don't know anybody. Sure. So I was like, nah, I'm cool. I can't do it. Now that you've reignited the brand, are you bringing back the events? Well, what's the next step? Um, I've been thinking about events, but you know, they are just too much work. 
So if I do events, it will probably be just to just to promote the brand, not to make money or anything like that. I want if I if I do because I've been thinking about doing something. Well, not fuck VIP. That's done and dusted. For me, please. <laughs> Just one. I mean, that's done and dusted. I mean, people who, who attended fuck VIP have, parents they have kids now, they are married. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. So I have to start something for the for the younger generation that they'll relate to. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I've, I've, I have some few ideas that are coming. Hopefully this year I might uh, do something. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at it, right? I'm thinking about the business, this, 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 this. What's the role of insurance? Because you also have a business car. Yeah. What's the role of insurance in your company? Do you have car insurance? Do you uh, have shop insurance? Yeah, we... Everything is insured. From the stock, to the cars, to the stores, to myself. Oh, you also insured? Yeah. Damn. Everyone in the company is insured. I'm insured because yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm obviously... Uh, one of the the major guys in the company, you know, the the the, the brains of the company. So sure. I had to take insurance on myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, everything is insured. I mean, uh, back in the days, it wasn't really like a thing, but now when I have, now that I have like business managers and people in different roles, these things need to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Man. I appreciate this conversation more than anything. I think as the culture, as the country, as the kids who've come up, most of us try to create brands because we saw your brand successfully work. Yeah. How does it feel to have a generation of creatives who come just from your lineage? Because we have dad. Yeah. He said he came up with that name and it was with you. Sure. How how is that feel? What's that <laughs> feeling? To be an anchor in culture. I mean, I mean, for me, I feel like there isn't enough brands out there. You know, I don't like um, I don't like dominating the market. You know, because there's there's too much money out there, bro. Mm. For me to be the only independent brand out there, you know. So I I I want uh, more brands to come up, more young kids to 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 start start brands and do what they have to do, because like. Honestly, there is nothing else. There is nothing to lose, guys. You know what I mean. So you have to start as soon as you can. As soon as you have an idea started. What do you think limits the brands from growing? I think they. I think mostly what I've seen, what I've, um, cause I've, I know a few brands from Pretoria. I know a few brands from Joburg. I think the most thing is is them having seeing it. You have to see it. Some of them don't see it. You know what I mean? I saw, I already saw Galax Boy with stores and whatever, uh, selling nationwide. You know, you have to see it first. Sure. Or when I, I mean, I had, uh, I have a lot of faith, because when I closed down the store in 2017, I still had a contract with my previous partners, and I couldn't do much. You know what I mean? I couldn't do much. All I could do was, I was literally, I was basically underground for three years, designing, you know, designing stuff you can't even put out. Can't you manufacture. Can't manufacture, can't do anything, because you have a contract that says you can't do this, you can't do that without yeah. involving these people, you know what I mean? So, three years I'm there, designing, designing, doing research, you know young depression here and there, I'm like, you know, I'm stuck. So eventually, but I, even even during those times, I had faith, I'm like, no, you know what, let me keep on designing and perfecting this thing. I know something will come up. And something comes up, uh, something happens that, we, that allows me to squash that contract. As soon as I squashed that contract, boy, I was out of there, boy. I was starting, I started this thing again from the bottom and now I mean now we have like two stores online store is booming like crazy I can't tell you how much I make but we're making a lot you know what I mean we're paying VAT we're paying tax yeah you comply like it's crazy our most important question on this show is what's your word to the youth man again to the youth 
You have to start today. Start now. You have nothing to lose. You've got no. You've got no bills. You've got no babies. You stay at your parents' crib. You pay no rent. You pay no rent. You have nothing to lose. You can start now, dog. You can. You have to start now. There's no other way. Yeah. I want start now. I want to go pay you. Understand? Don't listen to anyone telling you blah blah blah. Just do it. Believe in yourself. Have faith. You know what I mean. Trust in your product. You know. Uh, I think my one of my biggest, one of my biggest secrets. The biggest secrets of Galax Boy, is the product. Like, I don't market my. I don't really market. I don't have influencers. I don't have. Yeah. I just believe in the product. I just come in the room, put the product on the table. That's it. When we do post on Instagram, Twitter. Post the product, that's it. It's gone. You know what it's I mean? Sold out. Yeah. Perfect the product, everything else will take care of yourself. For AKA to hit us up and put us on a record. A hit. A hit record that's gonna be playing for the rest of our lives. It was the product, it was the impact we had on the on the on the, on the culture based on the product. Damn. I didn't I didn't send him money. I've never you know what I mean? I've not on that funny business. Mm. I didn't depend on any industry or whatever. I just depending on the product. So if the product is clean, then you're gone. You don't have to worry about anything. You just have to refine everything around it. Sure. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. So the use, please, just start now. You have nothing to lose. The internet is there. Google is there, guys. It's so easy. Don't wait on anyone. Don't ask anyone any questions. Just go on the net and say how to start, how to print the t-shirt, how to print the cap, how to start a brand. All the information is there. You just have to do it. It's all, it's all out there, dog. You don't have to ask anyone anything. When I was when I was when I was down for those three years, I was literally alone. Sure. On the net. I also when I was on the net, I found out about a luxury management course. Yeah. It was free. I did that shit. Yeah. Of course, in Italy or whatever, we used to uh, talk about uh, luxury management. Even, it, it even, um, there was a, this other concept called mestige. You understand? There's a, this term called mestige. It's, basic, it's basically saying it combines mass and prestige. Yeah. So basically, you combining luxury, but you're making it very commercial. Yeah. For example, uh, like the Magnum ice cream. Sure. When they ad- advertised it, they showed a sexy model. It's crazy. You know, like when you're at home, you're like, damn, this ice cream probably a thousand bucks. But you go to a Koshe, it's like thirty bucks. You're like, damn. How do they do that? It's mystique. It's mystique. So that's what I'm doing. I'm taking that luxury. Making it accessible. Putting it into the hood. But making it still look like mm. But making it available for the hood. They can afford it. They can wear it. They can be proud of it. You know what I mean? The way Louis does the handbags. The way Louis does the service in the store. The way the stores look. You know, my store is not a normal retail store where they just put clothes on the floor. Everything is packed. If you, if you step into my store, there's space, there's a couch, you can sit down. All the clothes are around the, the, the walls. You know what I mean? Something simple, luxury. So that's how we sell everything. But it's affordable. Anybody can wear that stuff. Damn, I think we have to wrap it now. And that's what I learned on the net. <laughs> no one free. told me, for free. So everybody talk like, just do what you gotta do, dog. Nothing can stop you. Yeah. Honestly. Appreciate this stuff. Sure. I knew that's why I wanted this. A mystique. Mystique. Yo, buy that Galax boy. Make sure. Go to all the stores, take selfies, promo it. That's culture. That's culture. That's culture. This episode of Kuna Chute and Beer is sponsored by My Way Blink, the faster, simpler, and more rewarding car insurance. Get cover in a blink. You can get up to 50% monthly cash back when you drive less than 2.5 kilometers per month. You can also manage your cover wherever and wherever with My Way Blink. Get a code in minutes.